Am I clear, sir? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Just a minute, sir. Can you see? Can you see my PowerPoint? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. Namaste, sir. Sundar Muthi, sir. Namaste. Honest Raj? Yes, sir. Yeah. Shall I search, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Here, my hearty welcome to our chief guest and to all my respected faculties and my dear friends. It gives me an immense pleasure to greet all of you your interest towards this webinar. So, to give you all a great and fruitful learning experience, the coordinator of MBA, Puducherry Technological University, Allied with Institution Innovation has organized a virtual webinar on proof of concept and the development of this. Now, I would like to invite Ms. Nancy, IEV Sagindir, to deliver the welcome address. A very good afternoon to one and all present here. On this auspicious day, I would like to welcome you all for this lecture. It's an indeed great pleasure to welcome you all who are gathered here. On behalf of Puducherry Technological University, I proudly welcome you all for this online series of lecture. I warmly and respectfully welcome our resource person, Dr. Radhika Menakshi Shankar, Entrepreneurship Management Consultant, Visal Consulting Service, for attending this event, even in our busy schedule, and my sincere welcome to the Department of Management Studies, Puducherry Technological University, for conducting this event in a successful manner. Last but not the least, I would like to welcome all the budding entrepreneurs and participants for making it an enthusiastic lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Now, I would like to welcome Dr. S. Sundaramuthi Reddy, the faculty of MBA, Puducherry Technological University, to deliver the presidential address. Ready, sir? Good afternoon. Yes. I thank. Am I audible to all? Yes. Yes, sir. sir. Am I audible to all? Yes, ma. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. You are audible. Am I audible, Hemakumar sir? Yeah. Can I start? Good afternoon. Good afternoon to all. First, I take the liberty of thanking Dr. Hemakumar, Dr. Francis, and Shivakumar, who are coordinators of the MBA Department of Pondicherry Technology University. And uh, I welcome Radhika Madam. I had listened to her inspiring speech a couple of times online. She may not be remembering me, but I definitely Sir. remember her. Welcome, madam, <laughs> for uh, this wonderful occasion where I'm interested in listening to you about entrepreneurship. And since I handle classes for them, I think uh, your talk will be a wonderful eye opener for them for doing the project, for starting their own project, for starting their own venture. I welcome you on behalf of uh, Panjari Technology University, on behalf of my students and other participants who are from uh, Pondicherry as well as other places of the state. Uh, with this, I request you to proceed with your presentations. I think uh, already we are delayed by about two, three minutes. Uh, I, students and other faculty members who are all participating, please listen to her and take the best out of it so that you can carry home with pleasant memories, especially post and session will be a very, very difficult session, but I'm sure uh, Madam will make it more interesting and more meaningful for the benefit of all of you. Thank you very much and welcome you all. Thank you. 
thank you sir for setting the surrounding with your wonderful speech now i would like to invite mr anbaragan iev first year to deliver the chief guest introduction good afternoon sir good afternoon ma'am good afternoon one and all i convey my regards to the chief guest of the day dr radhika meenakshi shankar who is actively involved in the startup ecosystem of india especially in academic campuses promoting entrepreneurship and incubation mentoring startups and also providing consultancy for i growth msmes through our management services firm at hyderabad wise owl consulting services since 2001 2011 currently she is based out of kunnu tamil nadu since since march 2021 her enterprise focuses on training entrepreneurs of startups and i growth ventures mentors faculties potential campus entrepreneurs students she has a credit of training more than 30000 potential and existing entrepreneurs domestic and the international arena she consults for educational institutions for their entrepreneurial activities student ventures incubation and ipr activities she has been involved in government startup india telangana yatra we up telangana pm ua programs telangana skills and innovation center she is in she is an accredited trained mentor of cii bist uk guild of skills 2011 and also an accredited trained mentor with the london business school she is a master trainer and a registered mentor with vadwani foundation despandi foundation indian army rehabilitation depot emme wing ci she is also the resident mentor with incubators like we up telangana sandbox kakatiya incubator nutri up imr manage up she served as a chairperson of bist hyderabad chapter c2 for 2019 to 21 and currently is a panel member of national panel for women entrepreneurship bist mentoring india she is also currently serving as rc committee member of evaluation and monitoring of rafter rjk grants under the aijs of moa gui manage she is also serving as a platinum badges global jury member evaluating student ventures of vadwani foundation across 12 countries she is also the registered mentor with moe government of india innovation contest 2021 radhika meenakshi shankar also a doctorate degree and also has over 20 years of academic experience in teaching finance and entrepreneurship at the reputed universities across india she has been awarded as the national level the champion the entrepreneurship educator 2015 special jury award by ministry of skills and entrepreneurship government of india edii british council and vadwan thank you so much ma'am for accepting our invitation and coming over to the seminar ma'am or to you ma'am okay Can you see my screen uh, the powerpoint? Yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. Now? Okay. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon and thank you very much for inviting me here today to share my thoughts with all of you uh, and uh, it's a real pleasure today uh, for me to share some of my learnings with all of you and uh, uh, and let us see what is the topic for today uh, being proof of concept and the business plan development uh, i would like to share a few thoughts but before i start i would like to start off with a couple of examples um uh, all of you have used red bus yes yes ma'am yes no all of you yes. have used yes, red yes. bus right so when red bus in 2006 fanendra sama and his team members actually were working in bangalore on a campus uh, interview and they got into a campus company just after college they wanted to come home for diwali and they were not able to come home because there were no tickets uh, available and at that time they did not know where the private buses stood where they were will they come to hyderabad bangalore to hyderabad so on and so forth 
they were simply clueless. They had to just go to the state bus stand. That was the only thing that was available. And there the tickets were not available. And the, nobody knew where these private buses stopped, where were they, and whether they, even if they stopped, where there tickets in it, and all these things. So they couldn't go home for Diwali. And then they thought, they suddenly developed an idea sitting in the room. He said, why not have a list of all the buses that ply between Bangalore and Hyderabad and the palm of my hand on my phone? And that was a concept, an idea that got generated that night in the minds of Fanindra Sama and his team. Now, once that idea came, it became like a bug, no? So it started eating into them. They started doing a lot of research. They found that a whole lot of people had the same problem, you know. And when they had the same problem of, you know, we don't know where the private buses are, what the tickets are available. And they, they then they started making inquiry with the private bus owners and said, how do you sell tickets? How do you know who are going to go? No, no, you know, many of our tickets don't get sold because many people are not aware. They just jump in and whatever we get. So they also had a whole lot of problems, the private bus players. So Samarfanindra said, okay, I think my concept will work. What if I draw a platform that will put the bus owners with the bus drivers with the people who want bus tickets? Now, here was the catch. They assumed that the bus owners would be very happy to jump in a platform. But there's such a stiff competition between all the private bus owners that they said, Are, why should we put how many tickets we have empty? We won't put. So now Fanindra has to pull a point. He said, look, this is going to be one more selling channel. But those guys refused. They said, we will not put our seats on a, on a platform to show how many of the seats are available and how much is going empty. Our competitor will know. They will outsmart us. Prices will be known. And they faced a whole lot of resistance. So to again prove his point that tickets can be sold online, Fanindra bought a couple of tickets from 10 or 15 of the private players every day, 10 tickets from 10 of them. So 100 tickets he bought every day practically. I'm just giving you a number. So he bought a couple of tickets from 10 of the players and put them on the internet and sold. Now those got sold on the net. He got back his money. But what didn't get sold was a severe loss. But what proved to Fanindra and his team by this is that people are willing to buy bus tickets online. The concept that was emerging in their mind was proven. And then you know history of how bread bus caught on. And today is one of the largest, of course, Fanindra sold it. But uh, it is a concept. Today, a lot of clones have come, no, Abhi bus and other buses. But I just wanted to say in, during the startup, when there is an idea, how do you actually prove that the idea works before you put all your money and actually build the platform, get all the bus owners, put it. He needed a proof that what he thought, the concept that he and his team came across, that all buses at the palm of my hand, will this concept work? So that is why he did this. That is one. Now let's go to another story. Have you heard of Zappos? If you have, let me know what do they sell. Anybody? Nobody? From the logo. It's a Spanish word. Shoes. Shoes. Thank you. So Zappos is one of the world's largest e-commerce site that sells shoes and clothing. And they're so big and they're very famous in Harvard's and Stanford's for the wonderful customer service. So let me tell you their story. Zappos is a name in Spanish for the shoes and that has been modified as Zappos. Originally, this company was called ShoeSite.com. Way back in 1999, the co-founder Nick, actually Nick Swimman, 
Swimmon, uh, whatever his name is, Nick, um, was searching for a shoe. He wanted a brown color shoe, which is air sold and so on and so forth in the mall of San Francisco. And he was walking. He went to one shop. He found the shoe, but the color was not good. In another size, he wanted. He got the color, but the size was not good. And this was 1999, folks, where e-commerce was a you know the buzzword and the new technology that's going to take off. So Nick said, "Why not?" I start a e-commerce in shoes, and therein was born the idea of Zappos. Originally, it was called ShoeSite.com. He went and met his co-founder Tony Shea, and Tony Shea is an investor basically, and he invested money into the concept. But they wanted proof: Will people buy shoes online? Now, this is a concept; it's a principle, right? I am going by a big assumption. Nick and uh, Tony were going by a big assumption that in 1999, people will be willing to buy shoes online. So they needed to test this concept. So quickly, overnight, Nick and went around clicking photos from real shoe shops and. Set up a site and put the photos of these shoes and said, "Would you like to buy? If you don't like it and if it doesn't fit you, you can return back in sixty days, free of cost, right?" So here was the first customer service they gave, because it's a new thing. Buying shoes online is something a new concept altogether, and they needed to test it out. and when they found that quite a few people took up to the idea and bought shoes and were happy to return it back and you know exchange it they really thought that this concept will work and therefore started building the platform shoesite.com once they built this it grew phenomenally till uh, they changed the name after a couple of years to zappos and they became phenomenal for the customer service like for example it, it, that uh, once they were you book it will show one week's time it will be delivered but you will find that the shoe gets delivered the next day and such things of customer delights they were doing and so much so that in uh, 2009 amazon jeff bezos bought them out for 1.3 billion dollars now that is the story of zappos uh, but what again i want to drive home is here was a concept in 1999 when e-commerce was just beginning to start and amazon was still selling electronic cards and books here was a concept that you can sell shoes online which they tested out by you know quickly taking some photos and trying to put it online and seeing if people are interested in buying so again once they got that proof that yes their idea their assumption that people will buy shoes online was proved then they opened up this company and as i told you it got sold for 1.2 billion now can anyone tell me what is this logo mam dropbox dropbox thank you so this is the story of dropbox another very interesting story now Way back in two thousand eight, Drew Houston actually is the founder of Dropbox. So Drew Houston always used to forget his USB. Right? We normally carry the USB and uh, you know transfer documents from one place to another. And invariably, he used to forget carrying his USB, and he used to get very frustrated. And he he thought to himself, "Why not have a tool that will share all documents and uh, you know uh, from a common place seamlessly? And that means it shouldn't matter if it's an Android or an iOS or whatever, but it should be very seamless." Now that is what the thought and the concept that came into the head of Drew Houston, and he decided to test it out. now how did he test it out he went round actually he had this very clearly in mind he went round to a lot of investors and asked them please give me money i this is my concept would you buy it but the investors said 
already these you know sharings there you can share on usb you can share on mail you can do this but however much he tried to tell them look boss it is going to be seamless and it doesn't matter it's going to be uh, uh, agnostic to whatever app things that you are using operating but no nobody understood him and therefore he found it very difficult to actually build this because he needed the money to build it and they, these were all a bunch of all engineers okay the founders and the co-founders were a bunch of engineers who did not know much of marketing but when they decided to build it they knew exactly the one thing that they really wanted was will the customer use it and what would be their reaction and what do they want from the product so that they may buy it and what were their difficulties how big was the problem of you know file sharing and so they set out did a lot of research still what they did was you know the 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 fantastic thing that these people did was you can even see it today or if you search on google is a video so dropbox first made a video and a powerpoint that explained the concept and here drew houston himself talks in the video and says okay here is it this is how i drop the file here in an ios this is how i drop the file in an android and still it doesn't make and it comes out the same so that's how he proved it again the moment he put that online overnight the number of people who uh, saw it increased like crazy people didn't realize that transferring files across these systems were actually very difficult but they saw that this was a easier way they started using dropbox like crazy right and the adoption rate for dropbox actually the proof was that so many people saw the video and they said excellent i would love to have it and subscribe to it immediately have you made it these guys hadn't even built the platform yet this is just a video demonstration of what you can do and then they built the dropbox and you know as you know it is so phenomenal really really phenomenal so these are some of the stories that i like to start with to talk about what i want to talk is drew who's i mean um, uh, proof of concept but before we go further to that i just would like to pick the slide which is there as a part of the powerpoint of drew houston sorry of the spelling mistake there say drew houston says in startup learning what did they learn while they did dropbox the biggest risk is making something no one wants and this is very true in most of the technical uh, you know i call it technical myopia you're so interested in your technical aspect you've learned blockchain immediately you want to do a product in blockchain you've learned uh, ar er oh then i'm going to do on this so you want to trust the technology in 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 a, in any product so that it is up and fresh in technology because you want to use the knowledge that you are but is it useful will the customer be will the customer find it good right so it may be a high tech product but if it is not useful for the customer and does not solve the customer's problem there is no use spending so much of energy money in building the product so by doing a small dipstick tests like this you can gauge the uh, the customer's view on what they want and then take in those learnings and fit it into the product or whatever is your technological product make sure you have some parts of the insights or learnings that you get from your customers and put it inside this so that it becomes a surefire success next is not launching may be painful you know you're taking a long time because by the time you do this diptic test you're testing out little by little you're testing to see if the concept works it will take time for the actual launch you want to build and put it in the market right so that is a gestation period of let's say let's say about a 6 8 months but um, if you do you were to do a small test and then go in for the big test right so it will it will obviously increase the gestation time period now if you don't if you you want to launch right it is you say oh you i am not launching it's taking such a long time it is painful and takes a lot of money but if you don't learn it's going to be fatal because after you build everything then it it fails and it becomes a big bomb right put something in the users hands and get a real feedback this is very important as i already told you know who your target audience half uh, hangs out and 
try and speak to them in an authentic way. So after hearing all these stories, let us sum up what is proof of concept is nothing but a presentation that demonstrates the feasibility of the pro proposed product, method or idea. In fact, it's a proof of principles that what you think this idea will work, will not work. It could be a project that you want to build. Will it work? It could be a new technology that you want to actually use and say, will this technology work on this idea? Can I use this technology and thereby use and work this, right? So it could be a methodology. It could be technology. It could be just the idea. It could be a, a concept in your mind. But you need to have a proof that what you think and what you assume is actually correct and that will give you a lot of feedback which will help you to refine your concept which you're thinking and then bring out the best so that is proof of concept now in a startup and entrepreneurial journey the proof of concept is like giving a whole huge boost of confidence right so it tells you that your product or your project has got super legs of its own that it can stand on and it will be sustainable and it can run a wrong time. Remember, always there's a lot of uncertainty around a project or in, in using a new technology or if you're developing a product or device or a service that you're trying to put together or a concept itself that this can be applied here or, or the principles of science itself. Now, by doing a POC, proof of concept, so proof of concept is a test, right? So by conducting this test, you can reduce the risk of developing a product that does not work or isn't feasible at all. This is obtained from a pilot project. So usually the test is called the pilot project where you do a small thing, like how we saw Zappos just took photos of shoes and tried to sell it online. Or like Fanindra Sama bought the tickets and sold it online uh, himself. Or like, uh, you know, Drew actually uh, made a video of how these things will work and how seamlessly you can drop it in the Dropbox and pick it out in another location. So all these things are visible to people and then they give you feedback and then you build the regular product right now this is also very very useful proof of concept in uh, drug development today you know that drugs need to be developed it takes a long period of time they have a lot of rules and regulations when you're developing drugs uh, and therefore you need to go for a whole lot of clinical trials before the drug gets approved by the board of drugs and these clinical trials also need to be done under the supervision of the board of drugs so these help us to actually know the efficacy of the drug and therefore you can call it as proof of concept right so most important is we are going to use all the feedback to mitigate the risk the risk is here you are building a product and suddenly nobody wants the product it bombs right then then what do you do like you know like segway now, I don't know if you've heard of Segway. Segway is a one hell of a technical product. In those days, way back in 1990s, uh, Wins and his team built a Segway. Now, Segway is that, uh, you know, it, nowadays you get it now, that L-shaped uh, scooter, right, which runs on battery, right? Is that as you just stand and it moves, right? So that L-shaped one, way back in 19, he talked about it and it was touted as the next transportation that will, you know, move away everything and a lot of people put money and everything. When they actually built Segway, it bombed in the market because uh, the roads in America did not allow uh, this on the pedestrian walk and neither could it go on the highway. It can only go on a cycle path and not all states had cycle paths. Cycle paths were there only in touristy places and so the Segway bombed. Move forward 20 years later, 2015, Lime Bird, these are two big companies that actually came and made the Segway cycle a little more robust, which can be now go on an app. And so you can book and take the, uh, uh, you know, Segway, like, you know, it is called, it's called Lime, anywhere from any metro station to any place to any place by just opening an app, clicking and it'll you can take it and drop it and close an app and play. So the model changed. The product was better received because it 
understood customer needs more. Whereas wins and segue, they originally said this is for, let's say, a policeman who's on a beat. He found it difficult because they had to change the battery every half an hour. The postman to deliver mail, he found it difficult. So there were a whole lot, a bunch of difficulties which wins and his team did not envisage. So the product bombed. So many investors lost a whole lot of money. Had he done a POC, I'm so sure it would have worked. Because they had to go back to all the states to actually change the rules of the state and say, build cycle roads, right? So it is very important that you collect feedback. So where can we use the POC, right? So in the ideation stage, whether the idea will work, right? In the product development stage, what all features do you need, right? What all, what does the customer need? So what are the pain points for the customer. So by getting all this information and feedback, you'll be able to build a prototype, which is a working model or in, in pictures. And then you can go to a minimum viable product. And then, of course, you go to the final product. You can also start off a new project in your existing company. Like, for example, you're already a baby product company and you want to see whether the baby toothbrushes can be actually used for senior citizens, right? So you have this as a concept. If babies, toothless babies can use this toothbrush, why not toothless senior citizens? Now, this is a concept. Would you like to test it out? So when you're going to test it out, then you say, here is a place where you do it, how you do it. Uh, etc. forms your pilot project of proof of concept of whether your concept works or not. Remember, whenever we do a proof of concept testing, it should lead to a decision. It should be a yes or a no. There is no in between, right? So once the POC is done, it will give you a definite answer. Yes, this project will work. No, this project is not feasible. And therefore, you have to conduct this very, very effectively. Now, in order to use it, like, for example, if you take um, in manufacturing, you would like to test the principal technology involved. In software development, you would like to see in it's in a process where this whether the software can be applied to your client and whether it will dovetail into the client system and whether it will mesh with the client systems, etc. Of course, drugs, we can also look at clinical trials. So, Remember, POC begins the process of product development. So when you're developing a product, it, the, it starts off with the proof of concept that what do I want in the product? What is the concept and principle on which the product or services will work? And the learning begins from the POC tests. And the fundamental hypothesis is also tested that Yes, people will buy shoes online. Or yes, uh, I, I, you know, like how... Um, our uh, Murugananda thought that, you know, pads um, uh, uh, needs to be made cheap for, uh, uh, you know, uh, the lowest strata of society, right? Now, you, if you look at what all can you prove with the proof of concept, right? By doing a POC testing, what all can we prove? We can prove whether the idea works. We can prove whether the product and product and services features are necessary. We can look at design, whether this design will work or not. Are they really good for real life application, right? So for example, let's take ideas, right? And let's take three ideas. The first idea I would like to talk about is windmills in Coimbatore. Now I have this idea. I want to start a windmill in Coimbatore, right? So now this is a concept in my mind. And how do I go about proving it, right? So I will definitely go to the weather uh, bureau uh -huh. and collect the wind. And yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, presentation is. Where is it standing? Is it in no, India? No, no, no. Presentation is off. Actually, for the for two minutes, last two minutes alone. Present your your face. Uh, presentation is completely off, ma'am. Okay. Then how? Stop sharing. It's coming. Let me share again. Uh, POC, it came, ma'am. Uh, you told about this feedback, drug development, all those things were there. Okay, After now that, can you, one minute. Let me just come again. Why am I not able to see it? Yeah. One second. Just give me a second. Yes, ma'am. 
let's go into google meet can you see now yes ma'am now it's coming so did you see up to this uh, yeah yeah Th this clinical uh, trials yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so basically we use the poc type of testing to test your idea product and services features or the design itself whether it is really good for real world applicability and is it feasible to do it big time so let's take some examples suppose if i want to take i have an idea i want to start windmills in coimbatore how do i test you know should i put in crores of rupees and set up a windmill and start doing and say yes it will work because i know the technology of windmills i've been working in zoos lawn for 20 years no i would first go and check whether it is feasible how do i do that i go to the the bureau and check the wind density and the speed of wind in coimbatore and how it is whether it is seasonal etc 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 right so i would definitely do a lot of this work then i would probably set up in a lab a small windmill to check whether it works or whether it does not work so here is what i will do so the, unless i do this testing and i found find it yes it is possible that this is enough to produce this much electricity therefore it is viable to put so much of money then only i will actually start building the real windmill now let's take uh, again the same example that I gave earlier is a toothbrush for uh, senior citizens. Obviously, the first thing I will check is whether senior citizens actually require a, a, a toothbrush um, that can help them, uh, whether it is, you know, what type of, you know, uh, massager they want in the toothbrush and so on and so forth. And you will ask them what are the difficulties the senior citizens face. So would they just use a mouthwash? So those are some of the things that you will actually take and then give a couple of uh, old people a couple of toothbrushes and get a feedback before you actually launch it into the new market. Let's go to the third example. I have this idea of a millet meat. Now, th there is a very famous these days is what is called as vegan meat, which is made out of plant. Lot of meat is made, uh, you know, just like regular meat, raw meat. Um, today, they make artificial meat, which is made with plant like soybean meat, which is so good that, you know, there is a company called Impossible Foods, which actually gave the investor two burgers, one with uh, plant meat and one with real meat and asked the investor to test and te identify the plant meat. And since the, the story goes that the investor could not and therefore he put money into the company anyway, Impossible Foods is a very big history now. Today, there are a lot of companies who are actually uh, working out on creating this artificial meat using, uh, you know, plant uh, vegetarian meat, as you can call it. Uh, it's an oxymoron word. But uh, here I am, I have this concept that instead of using soybean, can I make it out of millets like uh, jawari or, uh, you know, foxtail millets and so on and so forth. So this is a concept. Now, how do I go about testing it? So I start trying out in my own house, right? In fact, this is a real story of one of my mentees. So he started making this um, meat with uh, jawari, ragi, uh, and various kinds of millets to see the texture of how it comes and how you can use it. And some millets were good for making keema, but some were not stretchy enough to be kept for this. And so, you know, it is very difficult. You have to try out a combination of a couple of millets. So these are nothing but proof of concept testing that is being done on an idea. And if that works, and then it said, yes, this particular combination works, then you go in for the big business itself. Now let's look at proof of concept testing for, uh, you know, product features. Like, so uh, this is again, uh, you know, way back uh, about, uh, I should say easily about 15 years back, I had, uh, I was in Hyderabad at the time when one of the students came to me and said, ma'am, um, I have uh, developed a, 
a fan which has a spring so when someone tries to suicide uh, by hanging themselves on the fan the fan will fall down and uh, it will send a message to the warden or the hotel manager and the police station nearby now that was the fan that he had built and uh, so the question came was who would use it and why would you use it now the, the next question came was should he build the fan himself or should he uh, actually retrofit it into existing fan the spring and these things can you remove an old fan and retrofit it with the spring so that the uh, you know old lodges and etc where suicides usually happen can actually buy it because if he's going to build a new fan altogether with this particular feature it's going to take a longer time so there was a lot of proof that we required should i build a new fan with these features or should i retrofit this in the old thing so we went in for a huge survey with a lot of lodges and etc and then he got a feedback that uh, retro is any day better because each lodge had about 50 60 fans and uh, you can't say which room to put the spring and which room not to put the spring Next, I would like to go to another story of Coco Tang, one of my again mentees, Dr. Nilima, who's actually a dentist. She started this company in Hyderabad where it, they make a mixture of coconut water with fruit juices. So um, when she thought, uh, you know, she thought at first, uh, you know, the concept itself, you know, uh, there are a lot of people uh, who do not like to drink coconut water separately, you know, just on its own. So she was looking at this group of people and especially she had an aversion for coconut water when she was pregnant. So she thought pregnant people will not like uh, this. So for pregnant people, uh, she decided to mix a little fruit juice into it. And the first type of juices that she made was uh, with watermelon and pomegranate. And then she thought, will this work? Will this not work? Of course. So she went and tested it. She found that there were no takers much in the pregnancy segment. But she found that there were a whole new segment who loved her product. And that was the regular young college youth and working people. And so she developed 108 flavors today. Then she also found that there was a new group of people who were vegans and who really wanted smoothies. So coconut milk smoothies in Hyderabad. So basically, she did this proof of concept where she actually made only two flavors, sold it in the market for a good three, four months till, you know, she, I mean, she gave it in the market. She gave it for testing. Uh, she came to BYST, uh, Bharata Yuva Shakti Trust, which is an NGO that works for young entrepreneurs below the age of 35, providing them mentors free of cost. So here is what she did. She came and gave it to all of us and checked out what it is. And then only she went for a mass production of it. Now, if you take Digidine, again, another uh, good uh, mentee of mine, Nikhil. Nikhil today is, of course, dabbling in retrofitting uh, electrical scooters and uh, is doing very, very well in things. But this is one of his earlier startups, a very innovative young boy. Uh, he started this... Uh, digital menu for uh, two tire restaurants in Hyderabad and uh, he himself is a mechanical engineer and he said why not have a digital uh, an app by, wherein you know usually from college when they go during lunch hour it takes a long time by the time they order and get why not have an app with which you can place the order and so the digital menu was needed and that's how he started off now how did he start he just started with one restaurant near the college and using them he 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 bought a couple of uh, Samsung tablets uh, which were out of, uh, you know, the old Samsung tablet which everybody had thrown off. He got it from the Samsung uh, go down at a very rock bottom price and gave it to these people to actually place the order and created the software uh, through uh, a third party software. But what he did was he just developed it for one of this restaurant and slowly just the combination of this to this talking from here to the kitchen. 
that's all he did now once he found that it was very useful he was able to measure the success so he measured the success by telling the owner after using this software or after using this methodology of digital thing your number of customers increased by the number of table turns he was able to tell that the raw materials required actually the working capital of the restaurant came down all this he was able to capture by just connecting the table uh, order and the cook's uh, tablet so once he got proof that this works he developed went and outsourced it and developed it into a huge uh, thing and of course ultimately he was bought out uh, at a very good price and today as i told you he's into another company which is retrofitting visual uh, electrical vehicles now let's go to the third part we actually saw poc of an idea poc of product and now we'll see the poc of a design right so here was uh, one of the design companies i was talking to and they were saying do you know they put so many hours in actually designing a shaver blade right so shaving blade is something that every male uses uh, regularly okay i mean i'm talking the ones without the beards and the handle how easy is it to hold the handle the grip of the handle it requires a whole lot so what they do is they draw different kinds of designs and give it for testing and then pick up the one that draws the most uh, comfort level for people to grasp and hold imagine each of the toys that are being designed for kids right they really do a whole lot of testing before it actually comes into the hands of the child now another is the uh, incubator services right for example a incubator setting up services what all services it can offer startups who come and get incubate under them what are the way what are the ways that you can do it should they come directly can they come have to come through three four examinations steps qualifications so these are the design of how an incubator gets into an incubator or, like, or take your college admission process how do you want the process to be totally online offline how should it be right so uh, in fact there are today we have uh, you know uh, we be using vr and uh, cr i forget the name of the company but the name of the entrepreneur swati bonda right bondla b o n d l a so she in bangalore has set up a 3d 3d version of uh, uh, you know a vr wherein you can actually sit in your house and enter a college check out the college and take the application form for filling uh, for admission into the college right so those are some of the things that are being provided mm, what's up for visually impaired right so imagine how will a visually impaired person actually uh, use whatsapp now we are talking about not the super smartphones which has a voice mail and all those things we are talking about an ordinary nokia those days old phone right i mean basics how do i get into and you know uh, use the icon that i want if you are visually impaired now when this thought was done they did a lot of various designs and the design that was finally approved is actually a cover on a telephone so which means whatever be the brand of telephone you just need to put this braille cover on top and whenever you, you press the braille and type w h a t t s whatsapp that icon will come to you so that is how they designed it so basically they have designed various version and the version that was found comfortable was the cover which was uh, phone agnostic because it can be fitted to any type of phone whether it's nokia ericsson or sony or whatever it is so by doing a lot of these testing you can actually come around to one that works and one that will not work so poc helps us to know beforehand what is the possibility and the workability the relevance and what are the resources and technology required to develop this concept big time so what all information we need first of all we need to have an objective what are we testing by not knowing what are we testing you simply want to test no i want to know if this coco tang of uh, coconut water and pomegranate works will people want it right so i want to test 
the taste. I want to test whether this concept works, right? I have an idea. How will a visually impaired person select, uh, um, you know, uh, some person? So let's say a contact number that they want. How will they select it? Right. So I want to know how to do that. So th that. So now in this, you have to also have metrics to measure. How do I measure? Right. So, for example, you should be able to say like Fanindra Sama, probably when he was developing his red bus concept, he says, OK, I have bought 50 tickets with my own money. If per day, if 25 tickets or more are bought, then I think this plan will work. And if there were 25 and more tickets, he said, yes, this concept is working. If it was less than 25, he would have said, I don't think this is catching on. Maybe this is not the right time. Maybe I should drop the idea. These are the thoughts that will come to your mind. So metrics play a very important role because you, as I already told you, POC, you have to derive the answer yes or no. Also, the POC, you also you should have a time limit. Otherwise, your real project will get totally delayed. So the testing should be time based, the scope based and how much of work you need to put. And what is the scope beyond which you say, I'm going to test this and not beyond this. Right. Definitely it will cost you money. Now, let me give you another example of a company called Wow. Right. Uh, started by Paresh Basade uh, while he was in college in NIT uh, Bombay. He started off as a web designing, but co But later on, he moved to his project work, which is actually building a platform for data collection of alumni of the college. And as you all know, he tested it out on his own college. And this today runs in across for nearly more than 30 countries. And Paresh and his team, um, it's called WAV. So I'm actually not going to talk about the first part where he did his POC, whereas I already told you he tried it out on his college, his alma mater. But I'm going to go to the second part of him, of how he tested it on his clients. Now, you have to understand that the college already has a system of alumni. And he, when he puts his software or his platform, wow, into it, it needs to dovetail into the system. And therefore, it's like, you know, putting a ready-made, you need to do a lot of adjustments on the body that is there, that is the college data. So what he does is, instead of them putting so many lakhs and buying the software, he will take one vertical, let us say just the, um, you know, uh, how many of the alumni are entrepreneurs. So I want that data alone. So that vertical alone, he'll just put, filter it out and show it to them. So that way you can run a test and show them the effect and give them the feedback and that will convince them that if one filter can do so much how much filters can do it will also tell them how much more adjustments they need to do to the system in order to put this uh, software in so definitely the sales cycle of selling increases because if this particular thing does not work they're not going to buy the software at all so this is again Definitely, it's a two-edged sword here when you're using, but it invariably, if it clicks, then the client is so convinced that he'll straight away go for the kill. In, in these words, he'll actually go to buy the product. So POC is done at the ideation stage and in the problem solution fitting stage. And then once you are convinced that the concept will work, then you build a prototype, which is a working model. It could be a drawing, it could be a model, it could be uh, things. Then you further develop it with further proof of using it. Uh, you build the minimum viable product, which is the one which can be actually used and tried out, which is a beta version. And then you actually make the final product after the feedback. So you understand where the POC comes. Now, once all this is proved and the final product, you now need to make a business out of it. So once you have proof that things work out well, you work out and build the product or services. Now it's time for action to build your business. So from a prototype, you, need, you know that the project is viable. You start building the minimum viable product for which people are willing to pay money and buy it. And then you start building it or start mass production in order to start the business. Now, once you start the business, you need to know what is your business plan? How are you proposing to build this into a business in the next three or five years? That is what we are going to look at. And for that, 
you need to draw a plan right if you don't have a plan you will not know what to do you may think we can go by gut feeling but it is not always so with so much of people investing their time money efforts it's important that all of us know what we want to do and so therefore it is essential to draw a plan a detailed report of how you're going to run start run and build the business in the next 5 years of the product and services which you have proved beyond doubt will work you have proof that it works now how are you going to take it in a large scale build it into a business that is sustainable over a long period of life for that you need to draw beforehand steps of how you are going to build your business so the detailed business report d b r is a report which is also called as a business plan b plan is nothing but a document which writes out in detail in black and white what the company proposes to build its business in the next 5 years what are going to what all it's going to do so it's a re- detailed document that describes how a new business is going to achieve its goals it's a written format and it tells you how the business is going to operate and build its market and finances but you can also prepare a business plan if you are a company that's doing well but you're getting into a new project why prepare a business plan a business plan is prepared because you need to actually convince a lot of people maybe to put in money you need to convince people to actually join you in your team you need to convince um, the banker to give you an account you need to convince a supplier to supply a lot of um, you know raw materials to you so there'll be a, a, you so sometimes to the government to get permissions um, and licenses they will ask you what is your plan so there'll be a lot of people who say okay you starting a business what business so how do you actually tell this to them how do you convince them now to all these various stakeholders whether it's a government or whether it is a banker whether it is a investor whether it is your supplier whether it is your new partner or a collaborating partner new team member to all these people you need to tell them what your business is all about and what are your plans and ambition for the next 5 years so therefore you need to have something that is tangible that can be given to them now it's not necessary that the same business plan should be shared with all of them when i mean same i i mean not word by word same principally the same your idea is the same but you not necessary to give all the information to all of them right some information you need to give to some some information which is important you give it to others so you need to actually have one business plan which i call act as your uh, you know main diary right which is only for the eyes of the partners and uh, the team members and whenever somebody asks you give me a business plan based on this you have to give create a business plan or pull out a business plan and give it that is what it is so one minute these are the kinds of business plan sometimes you just need to give them a summary of your entire 5 year business plan and the summary is just a rough summary the executive summary on the other hand is a very formal summary which can be presented and it should be in one or two pages the full business plan then these are operational business plans are the ones that you give to your supplier or the ones for the supplier probably you need to only give him your production plan right you don't have to give your vision mission and all that stuff for the government who is looking at your taxes or your licenses and your capacity you need to give certain other details now the entire business plan actually can be summed up into a powerpoint which is called as a deck show right and this is also called as a pitch so when you talk about your business plan orally then you call it as a pitch when you give it in a written format you call it as your dbr or your business plan so the pitch is made from your business plan so these are kinds of business plan so usually a dbr talks about what is a great business market opportunity where are the markets that the company is going to compete in 
who is going to be the customer and who are the team the very most important you know one one of the investors were asked what is the most important uh, thing you see uh, before you put your money in and the top three answers was team 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 so team plays a very important role a great idea and a lousy team will not work a normal idea but a great team will work wonders right so it's very important that the team and the team skills knowledge network needs to be emphasized and written and of course what the product or service does and how does it solve the big problem the competition and how unique is the product the operations that have been put into place the production plan and all those the marketing plan the production plan the hr plan so all these things need to be written here and of course the most important is the financial viability risks and mitigations that are going. so the, i'm just giving you in general what the b plan talks we will go in detail a little more from now so now, does it require a whole lot of skills? Can I, the founder, write it myself? Usually, yes. The basics of the business plan is known only to the founding team because it's their vision and they know how much to work, what is their capacity. But it requires a whole lot of skills. For example, it requires that you need to forecast for five years what is going to be your sales, what is going to be your profit and loss account, you know, what is going to be your profits, how much money you require, what is going to be your capital, what is going to be your return on capital. These are all financial terms and you need to actually show what will be your tax burden how much of money you'll be generating by exports or those whole lot of things so can an entrepreneur who's basically a technique not all of us are endowed with all the knowledge right we may be good in one we may not be great in that so therefore it requires that you take help professionally but you should take it professionally and understand it the assumptions behind what it's being done so forecast you may require some software uh, which uh, can generate a lot of uh, graphs then for marketing plan and you know communications you require a brand building somebody to actually do up your social media and all that stuff for hr you need to know and spot right talent then designing the entire project itself and organizing how to put all these things together so for all this you may or may not have all the skills you and your team together may have complementary skills but you can use outsiders professionals to help you but the most important thing that i would really 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 emphasize here is that a lot of people use a lot of professional help to drop the business plan but when they come the professionals are not going to present it so let's say for example uh, we do mock interviews for bank loan applications to young entrepreneurs in byst as mentors we train them how to face the banker when they go for a loan now invariably these entrepreneurs would have not read their business plan and for the banker, the business plan is the, uh, the basic document on which he is going to disburse the loan. So he, when he asks questions around it, you know, these, you know, I have many of the times people telling me, ma'am, I don't know, ma'am, my accountant did this. I didn't understand. So it's very important that as entrepreneurs, we understand why we said sales will increase by 25% next year. On what grounds? So, for example, I'll just look and say, you have uh, actually said that the sales is going to increase by 25%. What makes you say so? So, then you say, so the industry is growing at 30% and the competitor is growing at this rate. And this is my, you know, field way in which I did this test and I found that there were so many takers. So, based on this, I am saying that this growth rate is 25%. Now, once you give such a convincing answer, I know that you have understood your business itself. So, this is very vital get professionals to help you with your business plan but it's very very important that every word of it every assumption every word you need to have proof and understanding of what is written before you write a business plan define the purpose to collect a lot of information write it down prepare a rough draft then go meet the professionals one of the most important 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 detail that you need to take with you is the five-year sales 
that you plan to do in the next five years every year what is going to be your sales now this forecast has to be done by you of course it can be top down which you decide or it can be bottoms up which you can go through the uh, you know market do the proof of concept or uh, testing and then say yes uh, out of 10 four bought so i hope next time six by and these are the assumptions you can go by prepare a rough draft then go for the financial analysis where you do a lot of financial statements and uh, do a lot of ratio analysis to understand what could be the cost benefit ratios definitely give the finishing touch then prepare your summary after you prepare the business plan then only you prepare the summary never prepare the summary although it is chapter one Keep reviewing it and updating it. So you need to gather a lot of data, all kinds, sources. You can get primary sources, secondary sources, collect a lot of data. Do a lot of proof of concept, feasibility studies. Without market research, do not even embark into business. So POCs are very, very much needed to understand your feasibility and then define your goals, right? By doing all this, what do you gain, right? By doing all this, you actually understand what is your path and a direction. It tells you what are the challenges because once you decide this is the road I'm going to walk, it can tell you what are the problems that you can face, what can be your emergency plans to mitigate these risks, and it will actually guide you. And you can, you know, whenever you present the business plan to different people, you'll get newer and newer ideas. Now, this is something from the great business plan from Harvard Business Review. He says, a great business plan is one that focuses on a series of questions relating to four things. People, I told you, team, the business opportunity, the context, why and how it solves the problem, and the possibilities of the risks and the reward, which is your profits. So these four things needs to be addressed through your business plan. Now, typically, Salman says these are the various aspects of a business plan. You need to have an executive summary. Of course, the number of pages given here are just for reference. It does not have to be God uh, rule. Uh, it can it's just used for reference. So you talk about your market opportunities, size, your offering, landscapes, strategy, your marketing plan, your financial plan, your risk mitigation plan, your team and various supporting data. Now let's go into in detail. So the executive summary, as I already told you, is prepared at last, and it should not be more than two pages. Uh, basically, it's a snapshot of all what you're doing, including your financials. The business plan starts off with a general description of what is your macro industry you belong and what is your macro markets and macro micro markets so basically it talks about the macro aspects of the environment and the need and sets the con context as why this problem occurs in the environment and how it is being done and how it is being um, you know addressed currently what are the gaps that the current solutions actually do not fill and that becomes your context right then you say to fill this gap we are setting up our company name the company vision mission and etc then talk about what is your product and generally the solution that you're offering here it should be generalized then you talk about your team very very important the team what is their background why are they qualified to take this and where is the location of your company then go into your solution your product description range features draw in case it's a service show the flow of your services then you go on to your production plan or your operational plan how many machines what machines what is your flow chart what is your factory layout what are the technology you're going to use whether you have some patents or licenses to this then go to your marketing plan who is your segment what is your customer profile what is your targeted segment what is your tam sam som how much of you know after sales services your communication so all the pricing the comparative pricing with your uh, competition how are you different from your competition uh, and all those things testimonials of your test marketing all these statistics should be displayed in your marketing plan we then go to the organizational plan, which talks about the people 
who will man what what is their roles what are their responsibilities what are the jobs how many jobs are you going to ge generate what type of uh, talented people you require how many skilled staff you require how many unskilled staff you require so on things but the most important is your financial plan where you talk about in the next 5 years what is going to be your sales what will be your costs what is going to be your uh, the profits or losses and how are you going to break even and say yes from this year i'm going to do a tremendous project more important is a one year cash flow statement because one of the reasons why startups fail is they run out of cash so importantly one year cash flows needs to be displayed and most important is you need to say if you're sh showing your business plan to an investor what is your ask right how much you want what is your exit plan basically here you're talking about what if there is any risks how will you do what how what's your backup what is your security so also an exit strategy for investors uh, you know how can they go back so that also can be mentioned in the business plan that you're giving it to the investor you don't have to show that for your supplier no when you're giving the business plan most important is the last part of the business uh, plan is the appendix where you need to enclose photos of your prototype flow charts testimonials uh, copies of your contracts uh, with clients registration forms uh, videos linkages websites portals prices that you've got uh, recognitions all those things need to be put in the appendix so these are all a part of your business plan so to sum up the key sections of the business plan are the executive summary the company the team the industry and the market uh, the problem area etc the operations the marketing plan the financial plan and the risks and contingencies and the appendix so here are some tips always collect your information and you need to edit 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 the draft get expert advice get lots of letter of recommendations before you actually start writing always have a financial info your five year statement etc should be brought down to five lines a summary of your financial statements that should be very clear you should know the strengths of your team and the market size and your clients who have expressed interest these have to be clearly you know put into the uh, in the document and while pitching also these should be woven into your conversation remember b plan will be scrutinized thoroughly and therefore you need to be aware of which page what word understand the assumptions of the financial data make sure the appendix are real and take care of it practice your mock sessions and keep a list of possible questions and answers that may possibly come of course these are for the deck show make sure you always have four lines introduction which is well rehearsed so that you can talk before you give your business plan here is the link that shows various business plan you can copy this link and actually go uh, the government the dbr plan and some of the business plans are here so you can go see a typical business plan so thank you and i'm now ready for questions hello can you hear me yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah any questions what is the fundamental difference ma'am like model canvas and uh, business plan will be a retail, uh, detailed right, right ma'am yes so uh, when we talk about a business model canvas this is basically a map a tool the business model canvas is a tool to show how 
you know the placement of you know oh, which customer segment you want to hit what is the value you can give that particular customer what are the suppliers you require what are the resources you require who are the collaborative partners you get now you put all that and you can have various combinations and say i would take this and how will the model look if i take uh, if i sell online how will it look if i sell it uh, offline how will it look so that is different models then from that in fact the business model canvas itself when you draw two three models is a proof of concept again for you as to which model will work well for you so that is also actually a tool to prove your you know proof of concept is anything that you do before you actually launch the business big time to prove to you that yes this works right so yes. i'm i'm glad you asked this question because the business model canvas is a tool that will share you know which model can i can i build a building with two floors can i build a building with four floors those are the things that will help you right so that the business model concept will tell you what model you want then you build a successful model so now the business plan on the other hand is once you have decided on your proof you've got proof that this model will work and you have proven then you write it out in black and white for next 5 years how will you operate this as a business and how will you get the profits and how are you going to move forward so that is a business plan the business plan is a final outcome of all the proof of concepts that you've had and now based on all the proof and the strength that you have yes i have done enough i have validated i have proven i know this will work then i'm drawing up my plan i hope that you got understood as to the as prototyping the mvp that you put all these are nothing but again tools of proof of concept yes ma'am uh then uh, i'm having my second question following that like uh, uh, how often should i update my business plan hmm very interesting question should your business plan be static or should it be flexible right static yes, is i decide i will follow this route come what may i will go in this route only no if a mountain comes i'll burrow through the mountain and go right so i'm not willing to shift my route right yes but you need to be a little flexible sometimes not always the route that you draw circumstances outside you you have no control on there are some events in a business which you have control which are controllable factors and the environment the macro environment like let's say the government laws or the political scenario a war a natural calamity all these are out of your hands right so how well are you prepared for such unforeseen entity uh, can you be flexible so normally it is warranted that though you have a business plan it should be like a guiding light okay. Okay. you don't have to be you know book word by word go for it yes. and you need to update it regularly based on whatever is the changing scenario now you can't be updating it every day but invariably it's un it's wonderful to revisit your business plan once a year look at things and whether the environment has changed do you need to make a change in your plan those are the things that you need to do is update your business plan regularly thank you nice yes ma'am and is it possible to write a business plan uh, without any specialist assistance ma'am like uh, we need some kind of a financial uh, specialist who can give some insights is it required or uh, we can or by this so of... is uh, there is a lot of things that you can do yourself if you set okay. your mind into um, okay. obviously finance it's always wonderful to have a financial uh, professional help to help you draw it and understand it because uh, whenever you submit your business plan uh, it's important that uh, the person who reads the financial plan actually knows finance and since these are generally accepted accounting principles across the world it's important that you draw the information in the same way that the world understands it and therefore you require a person who's professionally qualified to do but the data that you could now any financial plan is built on the basic data that you as an entrepreneur provide so for example the five year um, uh, sales that you plan project right you need to project five year sales 
Now, that professional will not predict it for you. You need to predict it. Right? How do you predict sales? Right? Number one, you predict it by the industry rate that is growing. Let's say you're starting a, a restaurant. At what rates are restaurant growing? The restaurant industry growing in India. Number two, you can. I mean, I mean these are the data you need to gather, right? And then number two, you 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 do on you go on the ground and see how much uh, products are getting sold uh, in the market. And if if this if out of uh, you know fifty people you approached. 20 a thing, then you know you have a hit rate of 20 by 50. Then if you actually look at it at this, how much percentage can you make it? Then third, you look at your competition. How much are they selling? So based on all these things, you need to fix the figures. And that if you give to the professional, they'll be able to project out the profit, trading profit and losses and help you with it. Of course, you need to also give them the list of costs, right? You need yes. to give them all the details, but they will arrange it and give it in a format. That's all they can do. But you have to give them all the data. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody has raised their hand. Yes, ma'am. Uh... Madam. Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, my yes. students are not under. My students are not understanding when the business plan is going properly, not properly, they have to crash the plan, project crashing. They are not understanding that. Can you just throw some light on that? Sir, sir, I didn't get you. Project? Project, project crashing. Crashing of the project. Thrashing. Crashing, sir? crashing of the, crashing crash. of the project. Yeah. It's a project crash, C-R-A-S-H, crash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yes. Okay. Project failure. Okay. Right. So, sir, uh, it's a very, very interesting question, sir. Uh, one of the things that uh, POC helps us to know is that's why you need to do a POC, right? Uh, the crux of yep. my talk today is uh, what if after you do everything, the project crashes and it's not working, right? And invariably, as students in BTEC, you're scared of your project failing and you think that will fail you. In fact, by giving the answer that it does not work itself is a good answer. But, you you know, in in our country, we we don't uh, accept uh, the, that, you know, this does not work as a good answer. Right. This method does not work. You have proven that. I did this and I, like Thomas Alva Edison, invented the bulb 10,000 times. It didn't happen. And then, then it suddenly happened. And then he said, I have 10,000 ways in which not to invent a bulb. So if your project crashes, you say, I have this particular way and I know if you do it this way, this will not work. But none of us will have the courage to serve it to the uh, professor and say, give me marks. Right. Because that's how our systems are trained. But most important is if you have had learnings from the crash. Right. That's very, very important. What did you learn? So the POC will be the best bet for you is before you start a project, take the crux of the project and do a small dipstick test. That's like Fanindra Sama did or, uh, you know, Nick Swimburn did. Test it out. Now, let's say your project is, um, let, uh, let me take one of the projects that came to me. Uh, as a group of students said that um, they can compress uh, uh, air and, uh, you know, take out uh, the um, thing and uh, give water from the moisture from the air and create water. Now, this is in Rajasthan, Jaipur. And uh, the students came out. So they picked up the compressor from the fridge and actually showed me uh, a, a cup of water uh, that they got. Uh, and uh, that was a proof for me that, yes, this concept actually works. So now they took this working concept and actually went and talked to uh, Suzlon, uh, company that makes windmills, and said, what if we attach this technology to your windmill, right? So then those guys said, this technology will not work for us because there was some uh, 
current that they wanted to show and they say this will use our current that is being generated and therefore um, the efficacy of our windmills will go so no we do not want this right now these guys came back and they were very sad they said ma'am project failure ma'am these guys are not interested because they thought that only windmills will use this so here was uh, a project which ostensibly failed but a project which actually worked in the lab right so then they went out and actually looked at some of the uh, you know cloud seeding today in fact i just saw that uh, uh, you know in dubai they are actually using drones to go and cloud seed it they are sending lightning shots uh, uh, electric current to clouds through drones and creating rainfall so there are newer and newer methods by which uh, uh, these uh, projects can be done so this this concept that these students had that they tried to develop it and found that there was no taker in this but they found that there was a taker in some other place right and then they worked out that project for their be and it worked so similarly you have to understand you need to understand why it crashed and where possibly it could work again right so proof of concept so then you need to do minimum testing every time before you actually start and run your project full time you need to do a small scale version of it you need to read a lot about who have previously worked on these projects what caused their failure how can you do better so it requires a whole lot of proof testing so you need to prove yourself just like before you go out in the rain you wear your rain coat you do this take your umbrella you wear gum boots similarly before you actually go into the real time project before you spend so much of your energy time and waste so much it's better you do a test do a lot of market research convince yourself yes this project will work before you actually start using it i hope i've been able to answer that thank you Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I had the similar incident. I just want to add to what ma'am said about this project crashing. Uh, my my uh, beta guide uh, would say like uh, whenever we try out with different methods. Suppose if the method doesn't work out. so then i have to say this particular technique does not work with this thing so that right. itself is a result yes yes ma'am thank you ma'am so if there are no more questions uh, can i call upon uh, sangeeta So before that, I would like to thank uh, um, Professor Hema Kumar and his team, uh, and uh, Dr. Sundramurthy for inviting me today and giving me this golden opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon to all. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, it's my tremendous honor to propose a vote of thanks in this session uh, on behalf of Puducherry Technological University. Uh, I extend a hearty thanks to our chief guest, Dr. Radhika Meenakshi Shankar, who spared her precious time to grace this occasion. Uh, throughout this event, we had an opportunity to hear your fascinating thoughts and lecture, and gain much knowledge on proof of concept and development of business plan. Uh, I extend my gratitude to our respected coordinator, Dr. B. H. Kumar, uh, for encouraging us to achieve many endurance. and also i like to thank dr sundramurthy reddy faculty member of mba department for spending his valuable time with us i must thank organizing team for helping this virtual event successful last but not least i would like to thank the participant for their active participation thank you all once again thank you sangeeta now i request the participants to take up the e assessment which is posted in the chat box and also kindly fill the feedback form about this informative section thank you thank you bye bye i'm leaving thank you ma'am thank you very much ma'am thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you madam thank you sir sundar murthy sir uh, thank you very much for gracing the occasion it's my pleasure sir it's my pleasure Thank you.
participant kindly fill out the quiz uh, form as well as the feedback link. We'll send you certificates. Thank you all for participating. I take this opportunity to thank all the student coordinators who helped uh, to make this function a real grand success. So every one of them really worked uh, the past few days. They have uh, made their posters, passing it on to the students and preparing for the thing. So special uh, thanks to all the students of uh, the MBA IEV second year as well as the first year as well as international business first year students. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Feedback link, Maruni Sharp, Shruti, Madam Ketraganga.